Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, hi, my name is Natasha and it's fantastic to have you here. For today's video, I am really excited to share with you this package that was sent to me. So this is the Bright Future Tarot by Saskia Lee and I have the deck here as well as the workbook slash journal slash guidebook and a beautiful cloth that you can use as a tarot cloth or a, a tarot card wrap. And so let me just show you this real fast before we get in to it all. Isn't this gorgeous? Here, let me put it so you can see. Like it's so pretty, this beautiful snake pattern. And it has the ties to where you can wrap the cards up and have it secure. And on the back here, it is all satin and um, smooth so it won't damage your cards once you wrap them up in it. It's just so cool. I love it. I love the colors too. Like the whole scheme of it all is just beautiful. All right. So let me just read you the back of the tarot card so you can get a feel for what's going on and what we'll be talking about. So the Bright Future Tarot Cards are a hand illustrated 78 card deck and accompanying workbook that blend ancient symbolism with modern psychology to make learning tarot fun, relevant, and easy. Tarot expert and clairvoyant Saskia will show you that tarot is a powerful tool for accessing your intuition. While remaining true to the traditional tarot meanings, each card is a modern interpretation of the core archetypes designed to evoke the way the card feels. Rather than memorizing keywords or trying to interpret arcane symbolism, the Bright Future Tarot presents a new way to learn and use tarot that teaches you to connect to the way the card feels, opening the door to accessing your psychic ability. You will learn that tarot is a visual language and a complete system that can be understood in just three simple steps, includes a digital guidebook. So the whole set you can purchase together as like a bundle or you can purchase everything separately. Um, there's many different combinations on her Etsy. I will link it all in the, in the description. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello. I will link it all in the description box below. Um, the tarot, just the tarot itself does come with a digital guidebook and it retails for 33. Let me check. Um, 36, 31. Um, but she's doing a 15% off sale at the time of me uploading this. So, um, and so on and so forth with all of the accoutrements here. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend this guidebook. I am so excited. I read through it all. Um, I have just been eating up all of the information because there's so much here and some things that I didn't even like think about, about how to use the, the cards. Um, so it's really, really cool. Um, going through it, it does have all of the information for each card. And in the back here, you will see if I can find it, there we go. Workbook and journal practical exercises. So what she did here is she made it more immersive. So how to use the workbook here. So three main skills needed to give a good tarot reading, empathy, card combinations, and competence. So um, we have a journal style, a question and answer style, and a multiple choice, which is so cool. So um, she suggests like copying, photocopying this page or, you know, writing out the questions for each card. So, or excuse me, not the questions, but the answers. You can use the questions for each card and write your answers for that, um, which is really immersive because like it or not, tarot is kind of like hard to get into and sometimes it's overwhelming. And so she breaks it down in a really awesome way. So all of these questions here, and then she gives you a sample reading about how it would go and then questions about the sample reading. And then what I really like are the multiple choice questions. I love multiple choice. This tests you and it tests what you, what knowledge you have and how far you've gotten. And it's not just about your basic stuff. It goes through love and relationships, what cards can represent what, and then it goes into career and studies and finances and resources and people and psychology and then health and well-being. It's just really interesting and really cool. And then it has all of the answers in the back here and then a journal worksheet. So 
however you like to learn, there's a way in here for you, which is really awesome. Um, for me and the way that I learn, I'm very tactile and very visual. So this is a really great way for me to test what I already know, or maybe learn a few new things that maybe I didn't already know, or unlock some past experiences that will help me to relate the cards to my intuition or my experiences. So again, it's a really good workbook. I was very surprised and I really enjoyed the information that she um, has for the cards and insights into how she uh, learned as well. So very, 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 very cool. I highly recommend if you're going to purchase the deck, you might as well purchase this too because it's very in-depth. All right, so now that we got the workbook out of the way there, let's take a look at the cards. So it does come in this tuck box here. And then we open her up. I have played with this deck all day. I actually really enjoy it. And there's two versions of it. So the one that I have has the keywords here on the bottom. There is a version that does not have that. It just has the title. So pick your preference. The one with the keyword will help beginners a little bit more, give you that extra oomph for your readings. So let's go ahead and dive in. Look at the beautiful back. I really, really love the color choices. I love the design. And if you do reversals, the card back is going to be consistent. All right, now let's get into the cardstock. It's actually really nice. It's matte. And so the actual grade of it, let me give you the actual specs here. It is 400 GSM cardstock, satin matte laminated, and it is the traditional tarot size of 120 millimeters by 70 millimeters. So I really enjoy this size. This is a really, really great size for my hands particular. It's like the Llewellyn deck size, which love. And let me tell you, I cannot wait to show you how it shuffles. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The art is so cool. Hand painted, hand illustrated, love it. And it is more modernized, so you're going to see a lot of things that um, you might not normally see in a tarot deck or you might not think would make sense. And so the Oracle is the High Priestess. It's just really fun. I really like the Devil card in this one. Doesn't, isn't this Beyonce? Like, didn't she dress in this exact outfit for her award show or something? I'm not a huge Beyonce stan, so I don't know, but I really feel like that was her outfit. Let me know. <laughs> and the imagery here really makes me, th like, think about different ways of seeing the card than I may not have before. And that's what I really love about artist interpretations of the deck or of what traditional tarot means. And also there's diversity in this deck. I was so excited to see all of that. I love this chariot card. I love it so much. I love the fact that it's like a roller derby girl and she is getting it. And justice is eight and um, strength would be 11. And there's a reason for it, um, how the number system works in this, how she explains the number system in the workbook, it makes complete sense. This big O do not disturb sign on the door, I love that. And this was a really cool strength card. And I really like this one, the hangman. The death card, oh, love it. Like how interesting are the interpretations? Like I, I'm really loving it. I love this devil card so much. I can relate like, and I feel like that's what 
the imagery should do. Like you should react to it and relate and um, maybe be scared of some of, some of them and maybe like, you know, have a reaction. I feel like that's important. And then this one, it might be a little triggering for some of you, um, but it makes a lot of sense within the context of this card. And I really like this, the Hope Springs. Oh, so great. And in the workbook, she does go a little bit more in depth with um, the, the imagery symbols, which was really cool. And there is the world. Love it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do the court cards first, and then it'll go through the rest of the suit. This one was really neat too, like a shattered mirror. I liked this as well. It's like King Arthur's round table. This one was trippy. <laughs> I liked this, the jellyfish. This one was really cool too. I liked that. Now we're in the cups. I really like this one with the waves. This is meant to be like an everyday deck, like something you can pick up whenever, wherever, use it for anything and everything. And I really do feel like it captures that with how like kind of laid back the imagery is. It's not terribly scary. It's not terribly triggering. I mean, maybe the tower for some of you, um, I, it triggered an emotion in me and it's it's because we kind of lived through it and I can remember that happening. Um, but other than that, like I really feel like this whole deck is just very comforting and just laid back in a way. It makes you think, it makes you feel, but it's not um, like it just just works. I love this one too. Little Mermaid there. And although it's not traditional imagery as far as like, you, you know, this isn't what the Nine of Cups looks like in the Rider Waite Smith, you still can get a sense of what's going on and an understanding and your intuition can like pick it up. Again, tarot is about your intuition and how it makes you feel and these cards evoke that I feel like everybody can relate to most of the imagery here if not all I love the birch trees too. This one was really cool. I 
I love this. <laughs> I'm not a huge Louis Vuitton fan, but like you automatically know what that card means just by looking at it and seeing the symbol, right? Like it makes complete sense. We all have seen that same picture on Instagram, right? <laughs> And I love this. Ugh. This is awesome too. I love me some honeybees. Little, little baby. That's just so pretty. And I love how they feel too, like they're matte. <laughs> I don't have to worry about reflections. Lemon tree, oh. This one was really neat. All right, and then we have the Ten of Wands. Okay, so let me show you how it shuffles because I was impressed. Oop, <laughs> that was user error. <laughs> there we go. They snap back. They feel a little buttery too, not like velvety, but just a little bit of that butter. Ooh, well, we'll read that one. Um, but they don't stick together. There's no um, like crazy bending. There's no, um, there's no issues that I feel with this cardstock. Like it's a really good quality cardstock. Um, but again, I'm not like a cardstock snob or anything. So like it really will take like the thinnest card to really um, upset me or like me not like it or like the super thickest card. If I can't shuffle it, then I'm going to have a problem. But so anyway, my point is <laughs> this is nice. It feels really nice in the hand. Um, I really like the size shuffles great. So what we'll do is we will read for the emperor here. Oh, I almost flipped through it. So look at all that information. So we have the number four, which represents consciousness. Element would be air. And then she does have some keywords. So the sense of identity, the ego mask, which makes complete sense. The self we present to the world. Businessman or woman, leadership skills, good organizer, positive sense of self, I am statements, structure and business. Then she does have the reversed for it as well. So negative self-image, rigidity, holding on to old ideas, self-denial, bullying, patriarchy, and overly structured. So I'm just going to read you both of these pages here so that way you get a real sense of what's going on in this workbook. I couldn't tell you about the guidebook since I didn't download it, the digital one. So I'm just going to read off of this. The Emperor Tarot card sits at number four, Consciousness. The old tarot decks or in the old tarot decks, he was often shown as the king sitting on his throne in a reference to when royalty ruled over the land. He represents the I am statements that give us a stable sense of who we are. For example, I am successful as opposed to I am unsuccessful. The emotional charge in both of these statements is very different, and depending on which thought we most believe, our behavior and circumstances will change. As shown in the card, he is the ego mask, the ideas we have about ourselves, the perfect self we present to the world. It is how we want to be seen by others. 
This mask also acts as a shield against those who would attack us or try to belittle or devalue our sense of self worth. When we possess a positive feeling of I am, then we conduct ourselves in an authoritative, easy manner. There is no ego conflict because we do not feel under threat or in competition with anyone else. Whereas if we're not feeling good about ourselves, we may struggle to accept that someone else is the emperor, either in the sense that they are more successful or they have power over us. In a reading, The emperor depicts our confidence within our chosen field of expertise. In business, it is the wise leader, the boss who can maintain control without losing popularity. At home, it is the parent who guides their children with love coupled with assertiveness. He is the authoritative director, the approachable parent, and the natural leader. In a reading, the emperor represents the reedee or anyone we ask about who has a strong positive sense of self-worth and we will be successful and lead. In regard to the question, if asking about career, this would indicate we would be better being in management or running our own business. The emperor needs to rule his empire and be tested. If not, he will get frustrated. Business acumen and leadership skills are shown as well as the mental clarity to create structure. The seated pose of the emperor shows he delegates. He is not the one doing the work, but rather ruling over those who are the doers. This brings us back to the connection with air at number four and the mind. He is most closely associated with the king of swords and wants to demonstrate his mental agility and intelligence. Number four also represents the foundation of buildings, their four corners, and I often see this card come up in regard to those who work in construction as self-employed builders or once as an MD of a commercial property company. When reversed, the emperor becomes bigoted and egotistical, refusing to compromise and insisting that he is right at all costs. Here we come across stubbornness, egotism, and tyranny. His ideas and need to defend his ego become fixed and rigid, resulting in stiff joints and physical tension. The reversed emperor is holding up his ego mask and saying, don't you forget who I am. He is trying to protect a fragile sense of self and can be cold, aggressive, and a bully. We may gain further information on what mode of bullying he uses, for example, next to the king of swords, someone who uses words and mental manipulation to gaslight and deceive others. Next to the king of coins, a materialistic type obsessed with accumulating possessions, controlling others through withholding resources. So like I said before, there's a lot going on in this workbook. So if you are a beginner, I really feel like both of these decks combined, or excuse me, (laughs) the deck and the workbook combined are great if you're trying to really hone your skills. I am going to be using this for a while to just kind of like dive into her mind and see, you know, where it goes and where it takes me um, because that workbook is calling my name. I'm really excited about it. I really don't have much of the negative to say about it. Um, And this can be a little bit pricey for some of you. Um, and I understand that, um, as far as like, you know, this is $36 for just the deck and the digital guidebook. I get it, but it's an indie deck. So it's going to be a lot more, um, than if you were to purchase something from Hay House or, um, Llewellyn, something that's more publicly published. Um, but the quality is there. And honestly, these are just my, just because it was sent to me is, does not mean that I'm not going to give it my honest opinion. This is my honest opinion. I would tell you, um, if I didn't think this was good and it is, I really feel like as a beginner, you're going to get a lot out of the whole set. And also, even if you're not a beginner, um, the deck that does not have the keywords on it could be for you. I love that there's diversity. I love that it kind of like unlocks some key memories in your mind to help you relate to the card a little bit better. I know this video is a little bit longer than usual, but I do feel like this, this is a really cool deck. Um, real fast, let's see how the wrap works with the cards now that we have it out here. So let's see how I would do it. I would wrap it this way, maybe boop, boop, boop. This takes me back to retail (laughs) when I'm wrapping (laughs) items. Ah, look at that. Okay. 
yes, that works. I did a really poor job and it's not beautiful, but it works. And I'm really excited about that. It's beautiful. Well, I'm curious to know what you think about this deck now that it's been 25 minutes. I feel like there's a lot of great information here. I feel like the deck is really beautiful. And I'm really honored that people are reaching out to um, ask me if they want, if I can review their stuff. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, so let me know what you think about this deck down in the comment section below. Um, I'm very curious to see what your thoughts and opinions are. Thank you so much for spending time with me and hanging out. I appreciate each and every one of you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out of this video. That way you'll never miss an upload from me. And thank you again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.